In this lesson, we are going to be using calculus to help us decide when a function is increasing or decreasing. Here we have a graph on the board. When we talk about increasing or decreasing, we are thinking about reading from the left side to the right side. So increasing, I'm going to use this little blue stick to trace along. We are increasing, going up the hill, up the hill, and then decreasing increasing a little bit and then finally the graph levels off and is flat and using my stick remember that derivative means slope and at every point to the left of negative 2 I have a positive slope at x equals negative 2 we have a zero slope then we have negative slopes it's decreasing from left to right then at x equals 3, we have a zero slope, positive slope between 3 and 5, and then finally there's a zero slope for x greater than 5. I would like to point out that at the point 5, 2, this is a sharp corner, and so we don't say that the derivative exists here because I can't find a point where the tangent line just touches exactly once. It kind of there's a sharp corner, so the derivative doesn't exist at sharp corners. So here on the right, we have our rules for increasing. We say that a function is increasing when the derivative is positive, when f prime of x is positive. We say that a function is decreasing when f prime of x is negative, when f prime of x is less than zero, and we say it's constant when f prime of x equals zero. So when we talk about increasing and decreasing, we want to know the intervals that the function is increasing on, the x values. So we see that we are increasing from negative infinity to negative 2 and, and that's what that u symbol means, and from positive 3 to 5. So during the intervals from negative infinity to two, negative 2 and then from negative from x equals 3 to 5, we're also increasing. We are decreasing only on the interval from negative 2 to 3. We're decreasing from x values of negative 2 to 3. Notice that the y values went from a positive 3 down to a positive 1, so it decreased. And we are constant on the interval from positive 5 to infinity. And so you can use interval notation. You could also just tell me that we're increasing for x less than negative 2. We're increasing for x um, greater than 3 but less than 5. So this is what we're going to think about and now we're going to use derivatives. So when talking about increasing and decreasing parts of the function, we want to think about the critical points. And we define a critical point as the x values where the derivative is equal to zero or the derivative is undefined. So in our previous example, notice that the tangent line when x equals negative 2 was 0, so I'd say f prime at negative 2 equals 0. Also, the tangent line when x equals 3 was 0, so f prime at 3 is 0. And the derivative does not exist um, when x equals 5 because we have a sharp corner. Remember the definition of derivative. The limit definition says we take the limit as delta x goes to zero of the different slopes. Well, coming in from the left side, I have positive slopes. The slopes are getting bigger. But coming in from the right side, the slopes are all zero. 
Well, a positive number and zero are not close to each other. This is a very sharp change in our two slopes, and so that limit did not exist, and so we say that the derivative is undefined. So the critical points are the x values negative 2, 3, and 5. Here's another example. f at x equals the cube root of x. We can rewrite the cube root of x as x to the one-third power. When I take its derivative, I'm going to use the power rule, and I get f prime of x equals one-third x to the negative two-thirds. But remember, the exponent of a negative two-thirds means we come down to the denominator. So this is actually one divided by three cube root of x squared. Or if you want to still write it as x to the two-thirds, that's fine. Okay. Well, this function, the derivative, is never equal to zero because I have a fraction where the numerator is one, and one divided by any number is never equal to zero. So f prime of x never equals zero. I do not get a critical point there. But we have a fraction, and that means that we could get a denominator equal to zero which means we'd have an undefined slope. So the denominator equals zero when x equals zero. And so we would say that x equals zero is a critical point. Again, if we use our tangent line, we have positive slopes coming in. The derivative, the tangent line is actually vertical at that point. Remember, vertical lines have an undefined slope. So let's use some algebra to find our critical points. Here are the three main steps. Step one, find the derivative. Step two, find out where the derivative is either equal to zero or undefined. Step three, determine if the function has, the derivative is positive, negative or zero on those intervals. So a key point is factoring. We want to be able to factor. And this is an algebra skill, being able to factor functions. I want to look at the function f at x equals x squared minus 5x plus 6. If I were to graph this function, the first things I'd want to look at are the intercepts. The y-intercept is when I plug in x equals 0 and I get 6, and so I have the point 0, 6. To get the x-intercepts, I would try to factor this function. And x squared minus 5x plus 6 actually equals x minus 2 times x plus 3. And that only equals 0 when x is either 2 or 3. And so I have two x-intercepts, the point 2, 0 and the point 3, 0. Um, I do know the basic shape of this function is a parabola. So I just drew in my parabola. The vertex, remember it's a mirror image. And so I know that's going to be halfway between 2 and 3, which is at 5 halves. And the y value is negative 1, so I have that point. So just looking at the graph, I can see that we are decreasing until we reach 5 halves, and then we're increasing after 5 halves. But let's do our steps. The function f at x equals x squared minus 5x plus 6. When I take its derivative, I get 2x minus 5. And when does 2x minus 5 equal 0? Well, that would be when x equals 5 halves. And so x equals 5 halves is a critical point. It is the only critical point because 2x minus 5, I know what that graph looks like. Its domain is all real numbers. So the derivative is never undefined in this example. So we only get a critical point when the derivative equals 0. And so that is our only critical point. And here's how the first derivative test works. What we're going to do is draw a number line, and this is representing our x values. On the number line, 
plot the critical points increasing from left to right. We only have one critical point. It's at five halves. And so now I want to determine is the slope positive or negative. For the first derivative test, there are two intervals to consider, left of five halves and right of five halves. So all we're going to do is pick a test point. Pick your favorite number, and let's start left of five halves. Pick your favorite number that's less than five halves. Well, my favorite number would be zero, because zero is nice to work with. So let's look at f prime at zero. And that might be a little small, so let me write it behind me. We have f prime of x equals 2x minus 5. So f prime of zero equals 2 times 0 minus 5, and that equals negative 5. Negative 5 is a negative number, so that means f prime of x is less than 0 in that interval. A similar way, I want to pick a number that's bigger than 5 halves. Let's say I pick 3. 3 is bigger. f prime at 3 equals 2 times 3 minus 5, and this simplifies to positive 1. It's 6 minus 5. And that's greater than 0, which means the function is increasing. And what I like to draw is an arrow to show decreasing, increasing. And that's exactly what we knew before. So f of x is increasing on the interval from 5 halves to infinity, and it's decreasing on the interval from negative infinity to 5 halves. But we saw that from the picture, but what I'm going to ask you to do on homework and tests is this work right here. And remember our key is factoring.